the focus of this Christ for the crisis series is Jesus. The good news we preach is not about the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The good news we preach is not about the Ten Commandments. The good news we preach is not about vegetarianism. These are important, but the good news we preach is about Jesus and his love. Jesus and his grace. Jesus and his mercy. The heart of our hope, the longing of our heart is Jesus. The teachings and doctrines of the Bible is not about Seventh-day Adventism. The teachings and doctrines that we espouse is about Jesus and his selfless sacrifice to save sinners. Can I hear you say amen? We believe, and I believe, without a shadow of a doubt, that I am saved, that we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus and Jesus Christ alone. Can I say that again? All that I have been saying up to this point is for you to recognize that even though we have sinned, we have a Savior. And we are saved not by our good looks. We are saved not by our, what we possess. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Let us pause tonight and get back to where we left off last night because the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 3 and God and when and when the woman verse 6 and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired and to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof, and did, and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. Verse 7 says, and the eyes of them both were what? Opened. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made aprons of themselves. And what they did, the Bible says in verse 8, that they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and Eve hid themselves from God amongst the trees of the garden. You see, because of Adam and Eve's disobedience, because of their lawlessness, Adam and Eve deserve to die. And all of us, Adam's children, deserve to die also. The Bible tells us that in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, that for not some of us, the Bible says for all, and that includes all. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are sinners. We are sinners because we are children of Adam and Eve. And as a result of that, we have inherited sinful tendencies. You don't have to sin to, be a, to do sinful acts to be a sinner. You are a sinner by birth. Praise God. There is hope for sinners. Praise God, there is hope for a sinner like me because Paul in Romans chapter 6 says that for although the wages of sin is death, hallelujah, the gift of God is eternal life to a church. The 
Bible says that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Can I hear you say amen? When Adam and Eve sinned, they should have died. When Adam and Eve sinned and when sin entered into the world, Adam and Eve should have died. Now, I'm not too sure, my brother. I'm not too sure. I, I, I'm not able to fathom the, 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 ex, the magnitude and the depth of God's mercy. Oh, depth of mercy. I cannot fathom. I, 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 I must tell you, I love my wife. I love my son. But I cannot fathom the extent of God's love, the extent of God's grace. I don't know why God chose not to kill Adam and Eve. Yes, I know, because he's love. Yes, I know, because he's merciful. Yes, I know, because he's gracious. Yes, I know, because his character is love. God took the initiative. And inspiration tells us that before the foundation of the world, God, the triune God, decided that if man would sin, because man was created with the choice to choose to follow God or to choose to disobey God. God in his wisdom decided that if man would sin, that he would make a way to rescue man from sin. Nothing catches God by surprise. And so he knew that if man sinned, he would put in place a process, a plan to rescue mankind. Yes, the wages of sin is, is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And God decided that he would condescend to pay the ultimate price for man's sin. Can I hear you say amen? Can I hear you say hallelujah? Paul in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. Or chapter 2 and verse 4 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his what? Great love which he what? Loved us even when we were dead in our trespasses. He made us, watch me, I'm going somewhere tonight. He made us alive together with Christ for by grace you what? Have been saved. And raised us up together and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been what? Saved. Now come with me. Come with me. For by grace you what? have been saved through faith and not of yourself. It is what? A gift of God. Watch me now tonight. Cease and settle. I need your help, language teachers. The expression that the action of saving is not something future. The expression have been saved is a perfect action. Am I correct? It tells me based on the language, Pastor Barnaby, that the action of saving 
when Paul wrote the action of saving was already completed. Can I hear you say amen? Woo For by grace you have been saved, not will be saved or might be saved. For by grace you have been saved. It is the gift of God. My eternal salvation, your eternal salvation. Oh, watch me tonight, Holy Spirit. I'm not here tonight questioning whether or not I will be saved. I'm not here tonight wondering whether or not I will be saved. I have already received the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. There is no Jesus, there is no salvation. If there is no Jesus, there is no future. But yes, there is Jesus. The Bible tells us that he came, that he lived, that he died, that he rose, and that he is interceding on our behalf tonight in glory beside his Father. God has already acted on your behalf. Salvation is an act of God. Jesus. Sin is an act of Satan. Sin started with Satan. Righteousness started with God. And, 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 and Satan stepped out into God's perfect domain and sin developed in him. And Satan came here to earth, tempted Adam and Eve, and they disobeyed God. They transgressed God's law and deserve to die. But God, who is rich in mercy, God, who is the embodiment of grace, God, who is the embodiment of love, decided that he would die so that man could live. That is grace. Grace. It's not the seventh day Sabbath. Grace is not Sunday. Grace is a second chance. God decided that he was going to give mankind a second chance. So the Bible says that he came, lived, and died so that we might live. In the Genesis story, Adam and Eve did not die. No, they did not die at that time. I wonder if anyone have ever cited Adam and Eve. No, because ultimately Adam and Eve died. And so God's word is true. Adam died. Adam's children died. Adam's grandchildren died. Great grandchildren died. And we will also die. But because of grace, Hallelujah. Because of Jesus, 
all of those persons who live for Jesus, all of those persons who die in Jesus, die with a hope. And as long as Jesus, our hope, our perfect gift is alive, resurrection power will bring us back from the grave. When he called, we will answer. When he called, we will come forth if we die in him. Jesus, therefore, is the perfect gift that God gave to sinful mankind. Jesus is the perfect gift. The Bible declares in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Jesus is not only the gift for me and to me Jesus is the gift for the entire sinful human race can I hear you say amen